Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video we're going to be rewinding it back to January 2020. I hope you'll stick around, see how I'm going to switch it up just a little bit and see the final cards. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad you're here again. Well, it is time for another sheet load rewind. And what that means is I rewind it back to a past issue of sheet load. Sometimes I switch it up a little bit, other times I leave it pretty much as the original was. Well, for today, I am gonna be switching it up a little bit. I'll tell you more about that here in a minute. But before we get to that, I do just want to remind my channel members that you'll be able to easily find the January 2020 link in the visual archive. You can go to our membership tab or the blog page to find that. If you go to the membership tab, you might have to scroll down just a little bit until you get to the visual archive image. Now, if you're not a channel member and you would like to download the January 2020 sheet load of cards, I will give you instructions at the end of this video how to do that. Speaking of channel membership, I just want to take a minute to say thank you to all of my channel members who help keep sheet load free for all subscribers. If you're ever interested in finding out more about the perks of channel membership, I do have a link in the description box below. Here's a look at the original sketch for January 2020. It had a couple pattern papers in the background and then a focal point down here at the bottom. Now the background of mine will look about the same, but for my image or sentiment area, I'm actually going to use some cut apart pieces that are from the same line of the pattern paper that I'll be using. Another thing that I'm going to change here where there is a little scallop border you'll see here on the cutting guide that was actually its own piece of cardstock. I will actually be using some leftover of the back of this piece of pattern paper because I only need six sentiment pieces so I might use some of these but it's going to leave this big open area where there are the four by six and sentiment strips so I'll have a big block of that green pattern paper to use for that scallop piece and sorry this makes 12 cards it was just six of each so the pattern papers and cut aparts that I'll be using today are from Flora Number no. 3 by Carta Bella. I am just going to choose 12 total 3 by 4 cards here that have sentiments, but I did get out both of these sheets because you'll see like this one here, it doesn't have a sentiment. Now on something like this, I could actually stamp a sentiment, but then there are others that you would have to turn it and that might not necessarily fit the sketch. Here is a look at the two main patterns I'll be using, again from that same line. Once I start the process, I will be bringing in other products and tools, and I will let you know about those. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! I got started today by cutting down the pieces of paper with the sentiment cut aparts. I tried to cut them so when I made my cuts it wouldn't slice through any cards. So this was basically taking three inches, sorry, four inches off the top of the paper at a time. Now that left me with that four inch strip that I will hang on to later for my scallop pieces. And then once I had my four inch tall strips, I cut those down to the final cards. Now instead of measuring the three inches, I did my best to line up the edge of the card 
card with the cut mark on my cutter. So I cut all of those down and then I decided on the 12 that I wanted to use for my final cards. Now because this wasn't a perfect science cutting them down, I did have some extra you know, bits of other cards on the sides. I brought in my little Fiskars photo trimmer and I trimmed off the excess. This trimmer lets you get very small slices, so it's great for little jobs like this. Next, I brought in my pattern papers and cut both of them per the instructions on the cutting guide page. To get started, I did choose the pattern paper that does have a direction, so before I could cut down my columns, I needed to cut off the branding strip at the bottom. Once I had sliced that off, I rotated the piece back so it read the correct way, and I cut this into four, sorry, three pieces that were four inches wide. The first two columns got rotated and cut into pieces that were three and three quarters inches tall, and then that final piece got rotated and cut into strips that are one and a half inches tall. Now I do have a little bit left over there at the bottom, and I didn't do it today, but sometimes I would use that to decorate the inside. For now, I'll just keep this for another project. I cut the second piece of pattern paper in the same way, but because this one did not have a direction, I could just start cutting with those four inch wide columns. While I was working on the pattern papers, I decided to go ahead and make my scallop pieces. What I did here, since my strip was already four inches wide, was I punched each end with my scallop border punch. I would do the one end, rotate it, do the second, and then I took it over to the little cutter and I cut this so it was about three quarters of an inch tall. This then will get adhered behind those small paper strips from earlier. Once I had those two scallop strips cut off, I now had two flat ends, so I repeated that process until I was down to leftover with nothing. This almost ended up being perfect. I did have to use one other small scrap for the 12th piece. Now while I work on that, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or question of the video. These are just fun little questions I like to get to ask you so we can learn more about each other. For today's question, since I am using a border punch here in the video, I would like to know when is the last time you used a border punch? I will tell you about 15 years ago, maybe 12, I was fascinated with these and I bought like every one I could find. And I never really got rid of them because I do like the just quick decoration they can add to a piece. So I do still use them off and on. I would say the last time I used one was maybe in the fall, um, but I do still love them and it's very hard for me to ever get rid of them. Let me know below if you love your border punches too. And if you've never used a border punch, let me know that as well. Don't forget when you leave your comment to add the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know that you've answered and would like me to see it. For my card bases today, I got out 12 that I had already cut and folded. Now the original sketch calls for a top fold card, but hey, if you have some side folds ready to go, go ahead and use those. The next step for me was to put those scallop pieces behind each of the smaller pattern paper pieces. For this first one, I added just a little bit adhesive to the bottom front of the scallop and then lined that up as straight as I could across the back top of that pattern paper piece. For the second one, I adhered it just a little bit differently, and this one ended up showing more of the scallop piece at the top. Now this is something where you could adjust the height of that to whatever you think looks best. I continued adding all of these until each piece had a scallop. Now all of the pattern paper pieces were ready, so I could start assembling the card bases. Piece A, or the larger piece of pattern paper, got placed toward the top center of the card front. You'll see here I did my best to get a nice white even border on the left, right, and top. 
Now the second pattern paper piece gets adhesive on the back and goes toward the bottom. Once again, I try to get an even border around the outside edges and line up the two pattern papers as best as possible. Once again, I continued just this same process until I had all of my card fronts ready. I brought in my sentiment cards and I paired those up with the card base I thought they would go best with. If the outside was floral, I tried not to put it with the cards on the right since there was more floral there. And if the outside was pink, I tried not to put it with the cards on the left just because there was so much pink at the top. Now it is time to get those sentiments added to the card front. The original sketch called for a smaller focal point off to the bottom right, but since these are larger, I decided to kind of center them on the card front. Normally, I probably would have added the sentiments with some foam tape, but I decided for these to go ahead and place them flat down on the card front. This makes these nice and thin for easy mailing and it will definitely not require that extra postage stamp. I continued adding all of these until all 12 cards had a sentiment. To finish these cards off, I got out one of my favorite flat embellishments, and that is the Elizabeth Craft Designs Glitter Dots, and these are the clear slash silver. There is a little silver frame around the outside of the circle, and the inside is clear with glitter. I proceeded to add three to five of these to each card, depending on the open area and what looked best. Once all of the glittery pieces were in place, the cards were finished, and here's a close-up look at each of those. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I rewound it back to January 2020. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now, if you don't already have the January 2021 sheet load of cards downloaded, let me tell you how to do that. First off, I do ask that you are a subscriber to my channel. It's quick and it's free and it's easy to do. Just right underneath this video, if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and click on that button. Now, I don't make you send me any proof or sign up for a mailing list, but before you click that button to download the file to your device, please make sure that you are subscribed. We just go on the honor system here. In the description box below, Right above my related products list, I have a link to the download. Now below it, it will say to watch the video for a password, but rest assured you watching this far to find out where the link is, is your password. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.